In 2013, Beyond Two Souls premiered in the Tribeca Film Festival. This was only the second time that a video game had been recognised by the festival, the first being Rockstar's L.A. Noire. The game's director, David Cage, said, I worked for 16 years on creating bridges between the game world and the film world, and our presence here tonight shows that it's possible. So, what is this film-game hybrid all about? Well, it's the story of Jody. If I had to say how it all began, I might just as well start here. Ellen Page stars as Jodie, a girl with a gift. Ever since she was born, she's been connected to a strange spirit from another world, known simply as Aiden. This often confused people into thinking that she's some kind of psychic, with objects floating around her, and an ability to see things that others can't. But really, it's just her getting help from an invisible friend, her personal guardian angel. Since childhood, she was raised in a special paranormal facility and cared for by scientist Willem Dafoe. But despite any attempts she made to live a normal teenage life by doing things like going to a friend's birthday party. Party time! I'll get the beer. Guys, do the shutters. Girls, do the candles. And Jody, you can take care of the music. Let's get crazy! Her gift made her different, and it made it impossible for her to fit in with society. Eventually, her abilities caught the attention of the CIA, who, after putting her through some rigorous training, had plans to turn into some kind of supernatural soldier, capable of completing missions that no normal person would ever be able to do. All of this, however, backfires on everyone involved, ah! and eventually leads to Jody having to go on the run. That's the basic plot of this game, however, it's not necessarily presented in this nice chronological order. It all went by too fast. I, I didn't understand it. It's, it's just... All mixed up. On starting it, you have a choice to either play the events in order or, as the director originally intended, experiencing the whole story out of sequence. So, here's a million dollar question which is the better way of playing? Usually, I'm a fan of sticking to an artist's original idea. By playing the scenes in a varied order, you jump around through different stages of Jody's life. You may be completing a CIA operation in a foreign embassy one minute, then playing with dolls the next. Hey, Fairy Blossom! Do you want to come over to my house for tea? Oh yes, I'd love to. It adds a level of intrigue because it makes you ask questions. For example, why suddenly have I ended up homeless and on the streets? What led me to this point in the story and what could have possibly happened in the gaps in the timeline? However, there is a downside to this. It's hard to get emotionally invested in, say, a chase if you don't even know why you're running. Its disjointed nature can become its downfall. The story covers all of the key moments that shape Jody as a person. She's crafted well as a character, and as a player, we're thrown into all of these different scenarios alongside her, whether it's playful teenage antics, action-packed missions, or even elements of horror, especially in the hospital scene, where we witness the aftermath of a massacre in which the dead are possessed to rise again. Rest in peace, George A. Romero. There's all of the usual button prompts we've come to expect from Quantic Dream. These all help you to interact with the environment, either to just kill some time or to help move the story along. A lot of these decisions have very little impact on the overarching plot, but instead help you mould characters into what you want them to be. Do you want to play as, for example, a forgiving or a vengeful Jody? It's up to you, but things will move along mostly the same, regardless of what you choose. Hey Jody, how's your day been so far? Pretty good. Then there's Aiden. Aiden. Playing as a spirit, you get to glide around through the world, unrestricted by certain physical objects, as long as you don't get too far away from Jody. It's like Poltergeist, the game. We can throw objects across the room, play with electrical equipment, and give the heebie-jeebies to people. Aiden also has some other skills, like the ability to heal, to experience flashbacks. But the most interesting parts come on the main CIA mission, here, it's all about trying to use stealth, which I found works surprisingly well. Aiden can scout ahead, kill certain targets silently, and take possession of some of the enemy soldiers. Get rid of them! I kind of wish that more of the game was built around this super agent idea.
Action sequences involve no obvious on-screen button prompts, but instead ask you to flick the analog stick in the direction that Jody's moving. Sometimes this can be a little bit hit and miss. It's not always clear as to which direction the game wants you to go. But fortunately, it is very forgiving, with there never being a game over screen, and often you can make a ton of mistakes with no real consequences. It's a game built to tell a story. It looks great, especially remastered on the PS4. The motion capture work is some of the best that I've ever seen, with some great performances. There's an attention to detail as if it was a movie created by Hollywood, with creative camera shots and some great music produced by legendary composer Hans Zimmer. I admire what the game achieved and what it set out to do, to be an interactive story with deep characters and a thought-provoking plot. The only problem is, as a gamer, I don't want some interactivity, I want full interactivity. When I play as Pac-Man, I'm in full control. Every move I make and every decision is made by me with an immediate response. If I make a mistake, I lose. And it's this interactivity that truly sucks you into a game, in a way that movies can't. It's what makes games unique. Thanks for watching.